This video is brought to you by these YouTube members. Thank you guys so much for your generous support and for helping me continue to not die of starvation. Hello everyone and welcome to the top 10 can't figure your own world characters on Bleach Brave Souls. A much awaited list that I can finally now do since we're out of can't figure your own world characters. Assuming they don't throw a surprise Ginjo and Tsukishima in the mix later. Which I'm not gonna lie, I do kinda want since Tsukishima is one of my favorite characters in Bleach, but we'll cross that bridge if and when we get to it. That said, let's get started. Now starting off the list we have Hikone, perfect example of how you can be number 10 on the list and still be a top tier character. Hikone has a really high SP as well as Frenzy. He can inflict debilitating weakening on all of his attacks and thanks to his strong attack recharge link they come back faster. He also have really good range with his strong attack 3 being a full screen, his strong attack 2 being a beam shot, and his strong attack 1 being a lunge move. This Hikone also has an extra sprinter so he can flash step an extra time and he has long stride, letting him quickly maneuver around the room and easily avoid enemy specials. Now I will say he probably would have been higher on the list if the old guild quest was still a thing. While the extended flash steps and the long stride is still useful in the new guild quest, it's not quite as valuable as it once was. Still, it's really useful and it makes him a really fast character. On top of all this, he's also completely immune from being paralyzed. Now next up is one of my favorite characters in this game, the Camp for Your Own World version of Shunsui. Now let's just get this out of the way. If it wasn't for his killer, he would be higher on this list. Despite being a thing for several years now, the no affiliation killer is still not as common as the other main three. It is becoming more and more common with it appearing more in Senkaimon, and with us about to get a guild quest event with them as enemies. But as of this recording, that hasn't happened yet. Aside from that though, this character is amazing. He's got a really high SP, Frenzy, Berserker at 20, and debilitating Lacerate on all of his attacks. In addition to that, he's got a strong attack recharge link that lets him spam his attacks, Havoc at 20, increasing the range of his strong attacks, and a rare ability that increases the amount of damage he deals with all of his attacks by 40% on lacerated enemies. And it's bound to activate frequently too, since his strong attack 2 is a hybrid vortex move. It's not only useful for gathering enemies in one spot, but also for inflicting lacerate since it hits an above average number of times. Then there's his special, that's guaranteed to inflict lacerate, and since he already has a plus 40 devastation, this special essentially does 80% more damage. It's not bombardment, but it is pretty close. Overall, he's just a great character who suffers from a less than stellar killer, though you can tell KLab is making a push to make the no affiliation enemies more frequent. Next up we have Seinosuke, whose name I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. He's got a really high SP and frenzy, and he's got Berserker at 40%, so his strong attacks deal a lot of damage. He's also got Bruiser at 40%, making his normal attacks deal a decent amount of damage, and even though he's ranged, his normal attacks are extremely quick, making them actually viable. Plus, since he has Guard Break, you never have to worry about using up a strong attack to break guards. Seinosuke's also got Havoc at 20, so his strong attacks reach a wider area, effectively pushing his strong attack 3 to be beyond full screen. His other two strong attacks also get a decent range increase, though they already had decent range before that. His strong attack 2 is a heal move and a barrier move, which makes him one of the best support characters, but it's also a hybrid vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before pushing them back. Because it is a support move, it doesn't come back as quickly as the others, but his normal attacks do make up for that. Honestly, this guy's just a great character, who's not only one of the best support characters in the game, but could also deal a heavy amount of damage. <laughs> Honestly, Can't Fear Your Own World had a bunch of my favorite characters, and here is another one the Beyond Resurrection version of Stark. This version of Stark has a really high SP as well as Frenzy. He's also got Havoc at 20 and ridiculous range on his strong attacks, with a beam shot strong attack 1 with really good reach, a strong attack 2 that encompasses a really wide area in front of him, and a strong attack 3 that's beyond full screen. All of these attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating burn and they're very likely to do so since he can spam him thanks to his strong attack recharge link. 
In addition to being able to deal burn, Stark is also completely immune from it. Now while there are other characters on this list that have Berserker at 20, Stark came out just before that started to be a regular thing, so unfortunately he doesn't have that. Still, his debilitating burn and ridiculous range on his strong attacks make him one of the faster characters on this list. Though I won't lie, I do wish they would have given him an extra sprinter just like the original Gunner Stark. Still though, even without it, he's an amazing character. Next up, we have the second version of Camp Fairy Ongo Grimjow, and this guy is an absolute beast. He's got a really high attack, as well as Bruiser at 40% and Flurry. On top of that, he's also got Berserker at 50%, though his SP is not that high, so don't expect too much out of that. Now, this guy is easily one of the best normal attackers in the game. Not only does he deal a lot of damage thanks to that Bruiser and Flurry, but he's also got Guard Break so enemies can't guard against it. And on top of that, he's also able to hit hidden enemies. So unless enemies freeze him, paralyze him, or kill him, his attacks are gonna do the full amount of damage. This makes him one of the best characters to take for autoing since he does not stagger and his attacks always hit. Plus, he's got a boosted 20% damage reduction soul trait, so he's able to absorb more hits as well. That damage reduction also makes him a pretty useful character for PvP. With all this, you'd expect a character like this to have a killer like a spot or Captain, but he's got a Soul Reaper killer, currently the best one in the game, and it helps make him one of the best characters in the game. Next up we have the second and most recent version of Hekone. Now, characters like this are really hard to place. What I mean is Hekone has an ability that increases the chance of inflicting a status ailment to a specific group of enemies. In his case, it's any tech enemy with a Soul Reaper affiliation. So if we were basing it just off of that, he would be higher on this list. But since that won't always be the case, I can't exactly do that. Caleb is really not making my job easier. Anyway, just keep that in mind as I discuss this character. He does have a really high SP and frenzy, and he can inflict debilitating weakening on all of his attacks. He's very likely to do so with his strong attack too, since it's a vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before pushing them back. He hits a ridiculous number of times, and it's extremely likely to inflict weakening even if you're not going up against a tech Soul Reaper. Hikone has also got Berserker at 20, so he gets extra damage off of that, and he's got Havoc at 20%, pushing his non full screen strong attack 3 to be just a little bit beyond that, and his strong attack 1 to have insanely good range. It also really helps out his strong attack 2, because it apparently wasn't OP enough. Finally, much like the last Hikone, this one also has an extra flash step, though unlike the last one, he does not have long stride, though it is still really useful for a enemy specials. Like I said before, it's a really hard placement because of that ability. We're starting to see that ability come up more and more, including in the upcoming Orient Society banner, so things are gonna start getting a lot harder to place. Up next is the Camp For Your Own World version of Holly Bell, truly one of the most versatile characters to ever come out. She's got a really high SP as well as Frenzy, and she's got Berserker at 40%. On top of that, she's also got Bruiser at 40%, and her strong attack 2 is a boost move with Enhancer, meaning her normal attack is now a viable option. Holly Bell also has Havoc at 20, so her strong attacks all have increased range, and this means that boost move that normally doesn't have good range now does. This also pushes her strong attack 3 to be beyond full screen. Now that strong attack 2 isn't just a boost move with Enhancer, it's also a barrier move. And the combination of those two things make her a really good character for support. It also makes her a really good autoing character, since depending on how you build her, you can go through most of a quest with barriers and boosted stats, dealing really decent damage with your normal attack, and high range great damage with your strong attacks. There's pretty much nowhere you can take this character where she wouldn't be great. Bankai. Next up, we have Shuei, the long-awaited Bankai version. He not only has a really high SP and frenzy, but he's also got Berserker at 20% and can inflict debilitating weakening on all of his attacks. He's very likely to do so with his strong attack too, thanks to it being a hybrid vortex move. 
The Shuei also has Havoc at 20, so his strong attacks all have really good range and his strong attack 3 is beyond full screen. Now overall, everything I've said so far as well as his strong attacks have all been pretty basic. And honestly, most things about this character are pretty generic. That's not a bad thing, it's just kind of what ended up happening. That said, he does have two things that really set him apart. The first, and the main reason he's this high up on the list, is the fact that he can completely nullify melee resistance. Meaning that, while other characters on this list may be faster, he is more useful to have, since you can now use him anywhere that has melee resistances. Whether it's in Kaimon Guild Quest Extreme Co-op, or any PvE that has any enemy that can guard since it basically doubles as guard break. Then we have his special, that not only deals a good amount of damage thanks to devastation at 40 and inflicting debilitating weakening, but it also lowers the enemy's stats, specifically their attack and focus by 33% and their defense by a ridiculous 80% then you deal a lot more damage afterwards. Now I won't lie, I was expecting a bit more flashiness out of this character. Still, you can't deny he is a really good character. Next up we have Tokinada, which is Spanish for your welcome. That's not true. What is true though is that he's a really good character. He has a really high attack of 773, and he's got Bruiser at 20 and a boosted normal attack damage link of 25%. On top of that, he's got Flurry and his strong attack 2 is a boost move with Enhancer. This effectively makes him one of the hardest hitting normal attackers in the game. And it doesn't even end there. When he uses his special, Tokinata transforms, and the magnifications on his strong attacks and his normal attacks increase. This also completely gives him back his strong attacks, letting him use him again. While he doesn't have the highest SP, he does have pretty decent strong attacks, especially when transformed since they now deal more damage. He's got Berserker at 50%, and when he's transformed, his strong attack 1 can inflict freeze and his strong attack 3 can inflict burn, though he doesn't have debilitator. This transformation does only last 30 seconds, but when he reverts back, his strong attacks come back with him. Tokinata also has has guard break so you never have to worry about that, and it makes him a faster autoer as well as overall character. Finally, to top everything off, he's also completely immune to being paralyzed. This guy is truly one of the best characters to ever have come out, and there's no doubt in my mind he'll withstand the test of time. これが完璧な生命だ。ヤビーダフォルニカラス。大地の同国を聞きなさい。男性でそ神様。出し惜しみはなしです。やれることは片っ端からやってきましょう。ご流天滅。過ちを繰り返すつもりはない。皆そこに沈め。永久に。ほんならそろそろ奇跡の時間や。ひっくり返したるわ。挽回。坂島横島八方塞がり。now honestly, Tokinata and Shinji were really hard to place. Tokinata vastly excels with his normal attack, whereas Shinji vastly excels with his strong attacks. In the end, I did decide to put Shinji at number 1. He has a really high SP, Frenzy, Berserker at 20%, and he can inflict debilitating confusion on all of his attacks. On top of that, he also has an ability that increases the strong attack damage of all power captains by 20%, and this includes him. So that's an additional 20% more damage with his strong attacks. But wait, there's more. While confusion is definitely not the best status ailment, any enemy that is confused gets hit with an additional 40% more damage from anything Shinji does, whether it's normal attacks, strong attacks, or special. This means that Shinji's strong attacks deal 80% more damage before Frenzy if an enemy happens to be confused. And he's pretty likely to do it too. His strong attacks do hit the average number of times, so there's nothing special about that. What is special is his insane range. Thanks to his Havoc at 20, he now has a strong attack 3 that goes beyond full screen. He also has a strong attack 2 that has the range of some other character's strong attack 3s, and his strong attack 1 just decimates anything in front of him. Plus, there's a special that's guaranteed to inflict confusion, in case you want to guarantee that 40% extra damage on any enemy. Honestly, the range on his strong attacks alone would have placed him really high on this list. Everything else is just icing. Caleb is starting to set the bar really high with some of these characters. And while Can't Fear Your Own World may be over, I really hope they continue the trend with Burn the Witch. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for some more top 10 lists.